Well, hey there, Fit Sisters in Christ. I have a guest on today that if you are in our Facebook group, you know her well. Alice, I want you to say hello because I probably will share the video too and not just the audio. Introduce yourself. Hey, Fit Sisters, it's Alice. I am so excited to be on here with you guys today. I have a story. We all have a story and yes. I just can't wait to share a little bit of, of where I came from and where I am now. So you guys get ready, hold on, and you might want to grab some <laughs> tissues because there may be a little bit of tears shed, but I just want to be real. I want to be real with y'all as much as I can be real and to show you that you can overcome addiction no matter what it is, whether mm -hmm. it's alcohol, food drugs, mm -hmm. whatever your addiction is, you mm -hmm. can overcome that addiction. So that's where we're going to go from here after you hear a little bit of my story and where I am now. Okay. So tell our listeners your full name. And I just want to share before you do that, that if you are a fit sister in Christ, or if you want to be just head over to Facebook and join fit sisters in Christ this month, we are celebrating October cover. Our October cover model and cover story is Alice. So Alice, share your full name, exactly how it's pronounced so people can find you. And then I want you to answer, uh, start off with this question. Just share a little bit about your story, like how actually jump in and share how you found Fit Sisters in Christ, the Strong Confident His podcast, and then go. we'll go into all of the, you know, if this, this episode is for you. If you're battling addiction, if you're battling, wanting to lose weight, if you feel like you can't do it, this episode is for you because this is real talk about hard things. And this woman has not only completely made over her life, she's overcome alcohol addiction. She's lost weight. She looks amazing. She has had a faith inspired transformation, not a me centered fitness transformation. She's had a Jesus transformation and her story is going to, whether you've ever battled addiction or not, or whether you're trying to lose weight, this is going to bless you. So Alice, the floor is yours, honey, take it. And All by right. the way, we already started crying once. So, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so get ready. All right. So my name is Alice Shoemaker Scarborough. Okay. So that's how you can see me. Alice yes. Shoemaker Scarborough. And how I found Fit Sisters was through another Fit Sister that is in the group. And we actually went to high school together and we are still friends. I'll be out of high school. I'll go ahead and say my age. I'm 47 years old. I'll be out of high school 30 years next year. And my sweet friend, Tasha Christmas, introduced me to Fit Sisters. Uh, we... Let's see, let me start by January of this year of 2022, I saw that it was time for me to get back on track with my health. I have a three-year-old grandson when he was two at the time, but I couldn't keep up with him. Mm -hmm. I was trying to hold down two jobs. I wasn't sleeping well. Just it was yes. time for me to get back into being healthy. Yes. So I said, okay, I came home from work. I work at, um, I work at a school. I'm a paraprofessional at a school and I work in third grade and I came home from school one day and I said, I've got to do something. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do, but just, I got to get back into doing something. So I put on my tennis shoes and I went outside and I walked for a little bit and I'm like, whew, out of breath. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> so, um, put something on my Facebook about, hey, this is the day, it's January 24th. I'm getting ready to start back on tonight, getting health healthy journey. This is what I'm doing. I'm gonna be drinking my water and doing my walking. So Tasha sent me a private message. She said, I have the place you need to be. You need to be in this Fit Sisters group and you need to listen to this podcast. And I'm like, I've never even listened to a podcast. That's the real note. <laughs> I've never listened to a podcast. So the next day after school, I put my earbuds in, listened to the first podcast, tears streaming down my Aww. face, walking. And I said, okay, God, this is where you're leading me. This is where you want me. 
you to be the center of this. So this is what I have to do. What made you cry? If you don't mind me asking. Um, it was the, it was a podcast way from the beginning. Um, I want to say, and I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. Um, but you were talking about how we needed to put God first and that we needed to invite him to our table. And it was, I don't remember what podcast. There's no way I'll ever remember. Oh, no, that, that doesn't matter. I just want to know, because none of that matters. I just want to know your experience, like what yes. moved in you? What, did was, God, what was God saying to you, Alice? Inviting him to my table, inviting him to my table, to what I eat, mm. and inviting him when I exercise. Well, I didn't even exercise. I ne I'd never done anything with weights. I had never done anything um, with any kind of strength exercise anything I just walked mm -hmm. and I'm like okay so let me see if I can do some exercise just sit-ups or something so I turned on YouTube I didn't know much about your workouts so I turned on YouTube did a few few of those so it was so sore the next day but I didn't pray I didn't pray before I exercised and so the next day I listened to another podcast and it happened to be about inviting him into your exercise. So then I started praying before I exercise, drinking my water, praying before I exercise and eating God made food. Never even thought about God made food. Mm -hmm. I just ate whatever I had in the house. Um, I don't eat out a lot. I live on one income. So a lot of my finances don't allow me to eat mm -hmm. healthy, you know, all the time. Right. I don't want to say all the time, but buy a lot of healthy God made food. So I, well, I was on food stamps at the time. And so I did buy things off of my food stamps, but then I got off of food stamps because my income had became a little bit more by working a part-time job. Praise anyway, God. Mm -hmm. so um, having having the prayer to invite him to my table and what I put into my body and that, that this is his temple mm -hmm. gave me a whole new perspective, a whole new perspective. Um, not so much as um, he gave me this temple. Mm -hmm. I had put so much toxin into it for so many years with my addiction that now it was time to get a lot of those toxins out, mm -hmm. eat the right foods, do my exercise, spend time with him. And that's what I did. So it started in January. Asha led me to this podcast, led me to the group. And, and let's just tell listeners, just so you know, if you're listening in real time, it's October now. So she's been doing this from January to October. So tell people, because the pictures of you are like, <laughs> not like you it's so i mean it's amazing but i i feel like we celebrate the the inside transformation that god has done in us and the outward the outward changes are we love that but i feel like every, the world has fitness backward it's living for the look and not for a life for jesus so Absolutely. when you're when you're doing your you're eating you're praying before you eat and you're exercising you, it sounds like you're just doing everything you can at this point back in january to start living this life modeled by how Jesus lived. So, it's so tell us what happens. Like, 100%. how do you feel like you changed from January to October? So <laughs> you had mentioned in one of your, you had mentioned in one of your podcasts about all the fads that are out there, mm -hmm. all, the, all the pills, all the different things. I've tried them all. I've tried Nutrisystem. I've tried Plexus. I don't know if I can say all the things, but I've tried all of them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't stick with any of that. So um, what I did, um, and so when I started in January, I had to keep holding myself accountable that he took away this addiction, my alcohol addiction, which we'll get to that in a little bit. That's a truly amazing story as in itself as well. Mm -hmm. So when I decided that I needed to get healthy on the inside, 
first, then it would show on my outside. Yes. So if I was full with him on the inside and understanding him on the inside, then I would be able to show on the outside. Mm -hmm. I was not trying to be transformed to be skinny. Right. I am trying to be strong, mm -hmm. to be strong, to hold down two jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, probably about four jobs, but anyway, um, to be a better version of myself. So from January until now, I have probably drank one million gallons of water, <laughs> ate 4,700 zucchini, <laughs> and tons of blackberries because it is my absolute favorite. Now, do I slip up? Absolutely. Do I have that cookie every once in a while? Absolutely. Because you have to treat yourself. You have to treat, uh, you have to have a little goal. To yeah. Work. I mean, even Jesus had Shabbat dinner once a week where yeah. food is, you celebrate food, but it's like, are you eating to live? Or are you living to eat? You know, like yeah. every day, are yeah, you like absolutely. looking for that? Like, so I, how do you have like, do you look, have like a, how would you base your transformation? Would you say it was weight, inches, strength? Like how it is, it was, you huge. look totally different. Your face I looks look different. Totally different. You look, she so, looks like a totally different person. <laughs> like God, God, I feel like God just rebuilt you I, I, and made it's you new. crazy. When I look back at the pictures mm -hmm. from January until now and trying to fit in some jeans and I don't know, just seeing those pictures. Mm -hmm. Because some days you feel like it's just not working. First of all, I stopped going by the scale. After I I saw that I was losing pounds, and that was great. That was wonderful. And I, and I have lost 20 pounds. I haven't lost any weight in a while, but I have lost 20 pounds. But more than that, I've lost inches. Yes. I've lost inches around my bust. I've lost inches around my hips. I've lost inches around my arms. So, and your waist, the picture you showed of your waist was yes. like, wow, and that's like waist. a different person. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I can tell that you're, you're walking it out with God and we don't really on this podcast, talk a lot about body transformations, but when you see that someone is the radical difference, like for just your face from January to now you look, feel everything about you got it's like god just he made you new he really did because mm -hmm. i asked him probably in um april well it was in march when i started having some medical issues um i had uh, went to the doctor and they found a cyst on my breast and I was having some other issues. Um, I remember we all prayed for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to go see an oncologist for not only my breast, but um, also uh, for my ovaries. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, what well, if I have cancer? You know, oh, what am I? What? I eat healthy. I work out. I just uh, got I started take, doing all of this. Like, I, what? I take on my vitamins. Like, why didn't this I broke happen? this addiction? Like, yeah, now, why didn't really? this happen when I was a, when I was an alcoholic? Why is this happening now that I'm transformed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I asked him, I said, God, I said, okay, through this, you're going to, you're going to show me mm -hmm. something new and better. Um, not only about myself, but about how I view others. Mm -hmm. and what I see through them yes. and what I, what I see happens with them. And so every time I would go to the doctor, I would see different nurses. Mm -hmm. And so I would ask them on that particular day, um, what's your favorite scripture verse? What, oh, what makes you I happy? Today? What, mm -hmm. what, what's, what makes you smile? So I wanted to be uplifting to them because they see a lot of, of, of hurt, you know, throughout the day and, and like, and upset people, and upset you know, people, people not always and, at their best. Right. Yeah. That's great and that you were trying to encourage them. So I would tell them, yes, I've lost weight and this, that, and the other, because they would mm -hmm. see on my chart, they had seen on my chart, oh, lost X amount of pounds and this, that, and the other. And I, 
it's all God. And let me tell you what happened. And so I would tell him about strong, confident kids. And I would tell him about fifth sisters. And so it just was a different way, every aspect through that, that illness, because I was down for six weeks. I didn't end up having cancer. Um, it was a cyst, a bleeding cyst that was on my ovaries that had affected all parts of my body down there. We call okay. it the South Pole. So the South Pole was having a lot of issues. And when the doctor came out to, I, I want to insert this because when I, when I came out, the doctor came out to talk to my parents. Uh, he, he said, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. I I thought that there was going to be some cancer in there. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, I did too, um, Dr. Evans. I did too. And he said, but it's not there. And Praise God. so um, my dad, uh, who, by the way, my mom and dad are um, my best friends. They've been married for 51 years. And I love that. They are my rocks. Um, yeah. through a lot, through everything that I've been through. But anyway, so it wasn't there. So that's so scary though. I can see why you're getting emotional scary. because yeah. it's like God, that could have gone another way. And it was like, God said, no, like he, he said, no. You, yeah. Not happen. And, and praise like, thank you, Lord for yes. Alice not having cancer. It was, uh, it was eye opening. So mm -hmm. Anyway, um, my whole body has changed mm -hmm. um, from the texture of my hair mm -hmm. um, to the color of my skin. Um, all of that has changed because I feel like I've gotten rid of so much toxin mm -hmm. out of my body. All that man-made toxic, all of the, disgusting all of that chemicals toxin, and garbage. All of that toxin and stuff. you've been feeding it God-made your God made favorite foods and drinking tons of water and sweating out all that garbage. So yeah. let's talk about that. Let's, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about your fitness journey or do you want to jump into um, your addiction story? Well, when it comes to fitness, um, I just want to say that it doesn't have to be long. You don't have to spend hours at the gym. You don't have to spend money. Um, buying all kinds of fitness equipment um, and all of that. It literally, y'all, I uh, walked, I did buy, um, I did buy three pound weights, five pound weight and 10 pound weights. And those are what, what I use, but I just look at different kind of videos and then I just make up my own moves and listen to my music in the background. I've even um, seen you. I think you left me a video in Fit Sisters of you on a bike too, right? Yes. And I love riding <laughs> my bike. Yeah. And a friend of mine. We do real life in Fit Sisters in Christ. There's no perfection project there. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and it doesn't matter. I'm moving my body and I'm it's going to get moving. stronger and I'm going to sweat and, and it's fun and, and like doesn't have to be this like perfect journey no, at all. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be long. It's so good. 10, 15 minutes, whatever time that you have, I just yes. move my body. And exactly. And that is what made all the difference um, mm -hmm. in the world is just being able to move my body um, on a consistent basis. Now there's times where, um, you know, when your body has to rest and yes. so you have to rest and rest is, Rest days are just as important as workout days they for sure your muscles are. to recover. Um, I uh, I don't drink shakes. Um, I don't take, well, I did some protein powder um, before, but I don't do a lot of that um, now because it kind of upset my stomach. Mm -hmm. So I just rely on God. I just, yes. hey, here we go, God. We're about to do this. I, I ran a 5K. Yay! Everywhere. Congratulations! That's so exciting. Yeah. Did you ever everywhere. think you would be able to do something no. like that? I mean, the first time you went walking in January, you said it made me tired. No. I was like, "What am I?" And now you're running a five k. I mean, now that's I amazing. Ran a 5K. And that was, and I and I came out like, I don't know, eight or something. Um, and that was in February of this year. So I haven't done anything since. Um, Go, Alice. Want to do the Louisiana 
half marathon, but I don't know, my knees may not let me do that. So anyway. The bottom so, line is that you don't need a diet. You don't need some no. fancy workout plan. Eat, no. pray before you eat, eat what God made, move your body in a way that brings you joy. Pray before you work out, pray after you work out, pray without ceasing yes. because God is with you on this journey. Amen. Yes. He, he, he is, he is our strength. Your living proof. The joy living of the proof, Lord is our strength. Is our strength. And it, and in it's, Nehemiah, Nehemiah yes. yes. So tell us about your addiction story. All right. So here we go. And I'll make cry in this one. Um, I, I am five, well, in four months, I'll be six years sober. But for 15 years, um, I was an alcoholic and I was a functioning closet alcoholic. Um, I was married. What does that mean in case someone's listening? Okay, and they're like, what is that? Functioning alcoholic. So what I what happened <laughs> or how that happens is I could drink all day long and I knew when to buy my uh, drink that I drank was vodka uh, because okay. vodka would, could go into anything. Vodka could go in my coffee. Vodka could go in my vodka um, coffee. <laughs> Never heard yeah. of that. My oh goodness. yeah, girl. Yeah. Vodka in my coffee, vodka in my Powerade, vodka in my Diet Coke. Um, vodka anywhere, um, anywhere that I could hide the smell because vodka is odorless at, unless you drink a lot of it. Um, okay. So anyway, I remember specifically um, when I started drinking vodka in my job and that's, that's a longer, that's a longer story, but I'll, I'll sum all of this up. Um, I was married. I have two girls. I have a, a 26, well, she'll be 26 in December. Her name is Alexis. And I have a 23 year old that is Haley. And she is my grandson's mom. Um, his name is Kyson. And so I have two beautiful girls, beautiful girls. And a functioning alcoholic, they call it, is I could function. I could um, go to church. I could work. Um, I could do whatever I had to do. And, but still be, for lack of better term, drunk as Cooter Brown, they would say. Wow. Um, I taught Sunday school. I um, was in dramas at church. I played Mary, the mother of Jesus, while I was drunk. I drank to remember my lines. Um, I uh, drank to, I drank any, anytime. Anywhere. What were you, what made you drink? Like what? What made the first drink turn into drinking all day long? Were you abused? Was it like something that happened? No, no. I, my marriage was fine. Um, it was finances. Okay. Financial. And my husband. So you were drinking to like cover up pain. To cover it up pain. To cover okay. up pain. And that's exactly what it was. I didn't have a bad marriage. I wasn't. Um, I, I Did was it go marriage. from like one or two drinks to three drinks to four drinks to yes, five drinks it, to like? It went from it went from a little shot to a pint to a fifth to a gallon a day. Oh my! That's gosh. a lot. About thank God. God you're alive, and thank God you've been sweating and drinking tons of water and getting there. all of that out of you because your body can regenerate and heal itself. Isn't it amazing I, that God made our bodies to heal themselves? Yeah, I literally should be in jail or not with us right now. Um, as much as I drove drunk, um, as much alcohol that was taken into my body for those years, um, I never got fired from a job for drinking. Wow. Um, I never, uh, I hid it very well from my husband at the time. I hid it well from everyone. Um, Did it feel like a spiritual battle? Do you feel like the devil was like trying to control you and making you crave this? Oh, a hundred, oh, like 100%. a spiritual battle because oh, I feel 100%. like people try to break addiction without God and we cannot break bondages like that without spiritual weapons we need god 
Oh, I can remember us. going into my closet and saying, God, just one more drink, just one more. I, I'm, I'm about to deal with so-and-so, or I'm about to deal with this, or just mm-hmm. one more drink. And I promise I'll stop tomorrow. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. No. And yeah. so that kept on. Well, first it started um, with daiquiris at lunchtime. And so I would drink a daiquiri at lunch and then I would go back to lunch. Then it started to daiquiris at lunch, daiquiris after lunch. And then it started to bring in the daiquiri to work with me, hidden in my purse. Then it got to, okay, I can't bring this big thing in here anymore. I need to find another way. And I actually had a customer come into my office and he started talking about how his sister was in the hospital with alcohol poisoning. And I'm like, oh, what did she drink? And and he was like, oh, why are you asking me that? And I was like, oh, I was just wondering, you know, said, well, she drank vodka because you can't smell vodka. And so oh, these man. light bulbs went off in my head and I'm like, vodka, I've never tried vodka. So that afternoon I went to the corner store and I shared that video in Fit Sisters where, I, where that first, where that all began. And um, I got the little shot of vodka and, and put it in my Diet Coke or whatever I had. I, Ooh, I can't feel this. So anyway, that just progressed. It just progressed and it got, mm-hmm. it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. Um, so moving forward. Um, and just uh, so sisters, you know, we're sharing this because it's important to be real. Like some people might be listening, think, well, I'm not an alcoholic, but do you ever say, I just want one more bite of ice cream or cake yeah. or chips or cookies, or I want one more, whatever slice of this, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like gluttony is, it is like, it is a sign that something is eating us when we can't get full. We need to fill ourselves with God. Like there isn't a one more that's ever going to satisfy you. So we're Alice is great being gracious enough to share her journey and what God has done in her to help another person through it. So we're celebrating what God has done today. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Yeah. So I'm going to fast forward. Um, I'm a fast forward. So that journey, that it, those instances started in like 2001, I believe my youngest was three at the time. Mm-hmm. So 2016, no, 2014, um, I wanted out of my marriage and I just, I wasn't happy anymore, but it, it wasn't because of my husband. It was just because of me. Right. So I stopped paying our house note. So, um, our house got repossessed. So I had to go live with my parents, um, with me and the girls were older. Alexis was fixing to start um, her senior year and Haley was starting uh, her freshman year. Now, so, do you feel like that was because of the alcoholism? Because I don't oh, think 100%. Alice, who I'm talking to, would ever just be like, I'm not going to pay my house note anymore. Oh, 100%. I feel like alcoholism, <laughs> any kind of addiction is a selfish disease. Like alcohol comes oh, first yeah. and it's all, you're all about yourself. Like yeah. alcoholism is all, makes you all about you, right? It is. It was all, everything, everything, everything. So I just started paying the house note. Didn't even think about what it would do to my girls or my family or, right. or whatever. But I would, I would make sure I had my drink and I had specific Mm -hmm. stores that I could go to even on a Sunday morning and they would sell me alcohol before uh, the time. Right. Um, And anyway, so we lost our home. I had to move in with my parents and my husband at the time moved in with his parents and he ended up filing for divorce. I was still drinking. Um, My parents tried to have an intervention with me. They realized that I had a problem Mm -hmm. um, because I hid it from them Mm -hmm. Uh, for all of those years. I was, I mean, I I was Oscar when enrolled. Uh, I was Oscar when enrolled. Um, I hid it from them and they tried to have interventions with me. I didn't listen. Um, I drank in their home. Um, Anyway, that's That's another story as well. But so what happened was and how this addiction started to break, let's get to the good stuff. (laughs) So in 2016, I started um, dating, uh, dating a guy from high school. 
thought that he was going to be my new husband. He was going to take care of me. And he didn't really drink, but I did. And he didn't want me to drink, and but I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So I went uh, Christmas of 2016. He's like, okay, you need to stop drinking. I'm like, okay. So for like one day, I stopped drinking. January rolled around. I was drunk at one morning at work at like 7 a.m. I got mad at my boss. I was at a good job. Got mad at my boss, quit my job on the spot. Mm-hmm. Called him and I'm like, okay, well, I just quit my job. And he's like, well, what do you mean you just quit your job? And I'm like, I just can't be here anymore. And he's like, well, I don't know what you think. I'm going to take care of you, but I'm not going to take care of you. Um, and I said, well, can I just come stay at your house for a few days? My parents are going to be mad at me, this, that, and the other. So I went over to his house. And at this particular time, my parents had put a tracker on my phone. Okay, I'm 41 at the time. So I'm 41 years old. My parents are tracking me. And I turned the tracker off. I went to his house about an hour and a half away from where I live. And... He's like, okay, I'm going to help you. And I'm like, "Uh, you're not going to be able to help me. But he's like, well, you can't drink over here. I'm like, oh, gosh, great. So he went to work the next day. I didn't have any alcohol with me. And I was craving it. Like, it had been almost 24 hours. I hadn't had a drink. Head was hurting. I have to have a drink. So I went to the store, got the alcohol, came back. And he called me and I took a bunch of shots. He called me and wanted me to bring him lunch. Well, I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to sober up? Anyway, I fell in his shower, busted my head. Nothing, it wasn't bleeding or anything, but it busted my head. Brought him his lunch. The next morning I woke up and all this was black and blue and just all, all my whole face. And I woke up the next morning and he's like, you got to go. You cannot stay here. And I said, well, let me just go home, get some clothes. We're going to that party. Uh, then everything will be okay. On the way back, he said, don't come back. And I said, well, let me come get my stuff. All my stuff is there. Just let me come get back. There was a whole bunch more into that. Um, that was not nice. So I went and got my stuff on the way home. Mom called me and she's like, Alex, where, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm on my way home. And she said, you don't have your tracker on. What, what's going on? And I pulled over to the side of the road, broken as all get out, just completely broken. And I said, Mom, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. And she said, Alice, I need, I need you to put that tracker on and I need you to get home. We're going to get you the help you need. And I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it home, Mama. I said, I, I, I don't know. I just kind of want to run run the Jeep into this tree. And maybe it'll just all be better. And y'all won't have to worry about me anymore. And she said, just put the tracker on and get home. So I put the tracker on. I drove an hour to, uh, back here home. And she said, we're going to get you help. And so I went to bed that night on January the 26th, 2017. I went to bed that night and I just cried out. And I said, God, I said, I know you, but I don't know you. So I need you to show me that you're going to help me through this. And that you're going to be the one to help me overcome this addiction. So, so if you're really up there, I could really use your help right now. So I went to bed. I woke up the next morning. And I went into my living room. I was at my parents' house. And I said, okay. I said, I'm going to call this rehab place. So I called the rehab place. And I got an answer machine. Oh, no. Can't believe I got it. Oh gosh, that's terrible. So I looked up AA. Mm-hmm. There was an AA uh, right around the corner, about five miles from my house, and I 
said, okay, mama, we need to go to this meeting. She's like, you're going to an AA meeting? Are you serious? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I need you to bring me. Let's go. Starts at noon. This was like 11 or or something. Let's go. So she got me to the AA meeting. Now, remind you, I'm all black and blue. Okay, my face is all black and blue. I look like I've been beat up. So we pull up to the AA meeting and she says, okay, do you want me to go in with you? And I said, no. I said, but if you'll get me to the door, me and God, we got the rest, but I need you to get me to the door. Oh my gosh. So she got me to the door. I walked in. There was one chair left. in this meeting and so I skimmed the room and I just looked around and there was a lady that was sitting kind of catty corner to me and she just mouthed the word she said forgive you <laughs> so it got around to me and I had to say for those of you that don't know about AA you have to say introduce your name and you have to say I'm an alcoholic <laughs> So it got around to me and I said, hello, my name is Alice and I'm an alcoholic. And what did that, that feel like? That was the that, first time you ever said that, right? That moment, it became so real. Mm -hmm. And that, what have I done? So that whole meeting, I talked. I just kept talking and just kept talking. And I walked out of that meeting. I got in the car with my mom and I said, mama, why didn't I do this years ago? Why? Mm -hmm. And she said, you weren't, ah, you weren't ready, Atlas. She said, but now you're ready. Mm -hmm. Now you're ready to change your life. So from that day forward, January 27th, 2017, I've never looked back. Praise God. Can so, we just celebrate that? <laughs> Can we just oh. celebrate that? I'm going to read something while you get, I'm going to give you a minute, Alice, because bless Alice's heart. She's just been through so much. And I was praying about our time together and I was thinking about it was right before, as I was getting ready, I was like, God, what do you want me to share? And there's something that I shared in my new book, Fit God's Way. And gosh, does it ever ring true here? Listen to this. It's a quote by Vance Harner. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It says, God uses broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give bread broken bread to give strength. It is the broken alabaster, alabaster box that gives forth perfume. It is Peter weeping bitterly who returns to greater power than ever. And I always like think of God can take our broken messed up. Like there's nothing that's so far broken that he can't fix nothing, nothing. And nothing. I feel like God wanted me to share that because God uses broken things. God, we are all so flawed and we are all so broken. And like I said, maybe your addiction is an alcohol. Maybe you throw up after you eat, but you don't want to oh. say that you're bulimic. Maybe you play with your food and act like you're eating because you're anorexic, whatever. Maybe you look in the mirror and you hate your body because you have body dysmorphic disorder because you don't know who you are in Christ, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, that you're handmade by your creator, that God only made one of you, whatever it is, take it to God because he, he loves you so much and he wants to heal you. And that's why I shared that because look at Peter in the Bible. I mean, Peter yeah. weeping bitterly and he returns to greater power than ever. God uses broken things. And I'm going to share a scripture to you to give you another second. And then I'll go on. It's Isaiah 61, three, it says, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. You yeah. got to give God the ashes for the beauty, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they may, may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. That's what you are, Alice. Yes. You, you got, you got it all. You got the beauty. 
you got the joy, <laughs> you got the garment of praise. You've, you're a tree of righteousness now that God can be glorified. It, amen? It's a, it's a, it's yeah. Amen. Yes. It's an I amazing bought you a few feeling. minutes to like, it's, yeah, I was like, a, I'm, I'm like, she needs a minute and it, I'm like, a, I'm going to grab a tissue and send it through the computer. <laughs> it's an amazing feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I went to AA for about, uh, for about a year, um, pretty faithfully. I haven't been to an AA meeting since. AA is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. AA, um, AA helped me get where I needed to be and gave me the jump start. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I needed to dig deep within his word. Mm -hmm. It was not, um, AA has a, a book that they, uh, uh, script, uh, not rules, but just things to go by steps, like a 12 step program. And that right. 12 step program does work. Um, but I knew I needed to dig into his scripture. I knew the Bible. I was brought up in a Christian home. My parents are amazing. My parents are um, have taught me everything um, about the Bible. We were at church every Sunday. We prayed before dinner. We had Bible studies at night. Um, it, I was the, the the you had all the head knowledge, but you didn't have the heart. I didn't have been, I didn't have it in my heart. You didn't have the heart, and heart. and Jesus does that. He when he reveals himself to you, it is. Oh my oh, goodness! I, I just. Even, can't yeah. explain it because it just it was just so mind blowing mm -hmm. that I knew right then on that that moment is when when he 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 said my name mm -hmm. that he knew my name and that I knew he knew my name yes and that whatever was fixing to come in, in front of me that he was going to be right there with me mm -hmm. and. And look what he's done. Like look, the Tasha Lawton song that says. My, like, that's my song. Look what you've done, God. And I walk around raising and, and raising my hands to that song every time that I work. Well, I always think I of walk. you when I hear it. Because I think I was like, you have to listen to this song. And you're like, yes. it's my favorite song. I have it on repeat. It's <laughs> Tasha Layton. It's called Look What You've Done in case you're listening and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to hear that song. And it's also on my uh, Spotify playlist if you're looking for yeah, good Christian music. Because song. when you hear a song like that and you can just raise your hands and you can just say, God, you did this. You pulled me up when there was no hope. And look at what you, look at you now on the cover of a little magazine. <laughs> Do you ever think you right? would be sharing your no. story? And, and when, like... <laughs> when, when I told my girls, um, it took a while for me to build trust from my girls, from my girls, from my parents. There was a lot of amends that I had to make um, to parents um, of, of children that I drove the way that I did. So there was a lot more to my story, mm -hmm. a lot of relationships that needed to be restored. Um, so when I told them, I said, oh, I'm going to be on the cover. And to hear my girls say that you're amazing and I'm proud of you. It's life changing. You're We're so proud. And you, all your fit sisters in Christ are so proud of you. So it's um, bottom line is, and you said it so good um, that that brokenness, you are never too far broken. And that is my biggest, how I want to advocate so much is this, Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how far you've gone or how, what you have done or how far you've just fallen away, or if you've messed up that, that God loves you through it all. And we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and, and I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know the Bible backwards and forwards, but I knew, do know that his word is true and that he shows me in that. And, and, and when I look at this mirror right here and it says, you, Alice, can conquer and I can conquer. I can conquer whatever is thrown in my way, whether it be finances, whether it be food, whether yep. it be alcohol, whether it be um, broken relationships, um, mm -hmm. you can conquer any of that by just being real, being true to yourself being real to those that are around you and not trying to cover up. I don't have a huge circle of friends. Um, and, and it's not even so much as having a huge circle of friends, but I have those friends that they see me now 
and they knew me back then and they see me now and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I had no idea. I had no idea you were suffering from this or through this. And I have people that inbox me and they're like, how did you do it? What did you do? And, and I just tell them straight up, I gave it to God. Yeah. I and gave it to God 100 yes. And you're because right. If I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am now. Mm-hmm. Not, I know. Not at all. We need to remember those scriptures that, you know, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You know, he overcame, you're an overcomer. You know, we overcome by, by the word of God in our test, the, the blood of God in our, the word of our testimony. Like this is your testimony. This is what God did. You're an overcomer. And she was going to wear an overcomer shirt, but which one did you wear? Um, I wore, she, is um, she is strong. It's funny. Cause she I was going to wear, she is strong too. <laughs> and then I put on fueled by grace. Cause I was like, <laughs> Alice is fueled by grace. So I'm going to rock this shirt for Alice today. Yes. 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 He it's- truly has brought me out of the darkness and into his light. And, and the scripture tells us that, and I think it's in John. And it tells us all throughout the Bible, but he, he did. He truly brought me out of the darkness uh, and into his light. And that's what I try to do every day. Now I'm in college. I'm going to get my degree. So I'm going to be a, a, a teacher with a paycheck <laughs> instead yes. of a para with a small paycheck. So I'm, I'm in college. Um, I, I'm surrounded by positive my family is my life. And that's what I want to do to the women at school because they suffer through so many different um, hurts. Mm-hmm. We all have hurts, habits, and hangups every day. And, and eating God's way and eating, fueling our bodies with his food, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, it, it truly is life-changing. It truly is life-changing because I have transformed not only um, on the outside, but on the inside. And I speak truth. I speak mm-hmm. truth and I'm knowledgeable of, of what I speak. Whereas years ago, when I'm trying to portray this different person and, and play this double life, and, and it took a toll on my body. I mean, I look back oh, at yeah. pictures and, and, and my eyes were all, uh, all black and, and wasn't sleeping. I mean, I, I would get up in the middle of night and take shots um, just so I could go back to sleep. I mean, alcohol was every, everything um, about me. But that addiction that he took from me, mm-hmm. it made me so new. And, and he can do the same for you. And And he's using it. He's using everything you went through right now. Someone's going to listen to this and you're going to help them. And when you share your story, you're helping other people because nobody wants to learn from someone who knows it all. They want to learn from someone who just got through it. They want to hear that that God can save you. And I, I tell people, people always say, why do you talk about, I mean, I have people say things to me that shock me. Like, you're so pretty. Why do you waste your time talking about God and fitness? Nobody wants to hear that. And I'm like, that's what everyone needs to hear. That's is that what everyone, right? If you're just going to do fitness for what you look like, you're going to literally be miserable because it's just an endless, frustrating flesh project. And when you finally reach your goal, like are, you're never going to be able to maintain it because your motivation is God can't honor that. And it's just a mess. Right? So I, I feel like my fitness journey of being overweight and out of shape and having, you know, got the insecurities that I've had all the things, anything I'm like, God, it's yours. Use it, you know, going through menopause, whatever it is. I'm just like, God, just use it and help somebody with it because we aren't, we're here to help other people. We aren't here for ourselves. It's like, I always right. want to live like Jesus who came to serve. He, he wasn't walking. People weren't coming to him in some beautiful temple and he wasn't in these like lavish robes he was walking around everywhere serving he came to serve and he finished his race i mean with endurance like i i want to model my like people are always like who inspires you i'm like i want to be like jesus period i know you know know. he so 
a lot of my new book fit God's way is based on that because we don't need another diet program. We don't need another protein powder or supplement. We need Jesus and we need him right now more than ever. So Mm. we're going to wrap up here. So I want you to tell me, is there anything that you didn't say that you want to say or any scriptures you want to share or anything like that? And then I want you to pray. We probably could have talked for about three more hours. (laughs) I know. I want you to pray for us and then I will close us out. So stay with me to the end, but just if there's anything you want to say and then pray for us. The, the one thing that I want to say, um, and I think the biggest thing is that through, through it all, he has shown me that even in the darkest of times, even in the darkest of times, that he was there for me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize it. Mm-hmm. So here I am now, 47 years old. Back 47 in years young. Yes, 47 years young. <laughs> I'm back in college. I'm never happy. too late, never too Dude, old. Numerous, I'm your cheerleader in the background. Yes, look, <laughs> numerous um, little side jobs that, that I do. Mm-hmm. And I can do it because I feel good. Yes. I can keep up with my grandson and I can, I can love like Jesus and truly mean everything that comes out of my mouth and that I'm not living a lie. So anyway, that's so good because so many of us have, I'm going to write a book. We have, yeah, we have a secular, we do life in the spirit. Like we go to church, but our life is secular. The rest of the week, we go to work out. We're like all about ourselves. And, you know, like, it's amazing to me how we can compartmentalize our life, but you like me, we've given Jesus everything like here, Jesus, take the wheel. Cause I drove my life into a ditch. You drove your life. And we all, hopefully someone's listening and they don't have to end up getting, hitting rock bottom to turn to Jesus. But I did. And I I did. Yeah. I probably should share a lot more of my testimony. I don't even know. As I was just uh, saying that, I felt like God say, why haven't you shared a lot of your testimony? But I feel like I'm always trying to make it about you guys. Like what? Okay. God, you want me to use the the hormone thing or like all the weight loss struggles. So I'm always trying to help people, but I think what people, I hope what people take away from this is that it is never too late. God uses broken things. He makes all things new. He is, he loves you. And he, like Alice said, wherever you're struggling right now, like if you're binge eating, if you're anorexic, like if you're struggling with anorexia, if you're struggling with body dysmorphic disorder, if you feel like there's some disorder or addiction in your life right now, he, he already knows it's no, you are no surprise to him. He has been walking it all out with you (laughs) and he loves you anyway. He wants to save you. He's just, he he's trying to guide you. I know when you look back, don't you see a million things where he was like, Alice, like he's trying to throw you a million things to save you and you're just ignoring it. And I'm like, no, not today. No, yeah. But you reach a point. I can do this. (laughs) Yeah. You reach a point and you're like, okay, nothing else works. I need to have that come to Jesus. And these words in the Bible, they're not just, they're no longer head knowledge. They are heart knowledge. Like they, they, you read something you read a million times and you read it and you're like, (gasps) and you cry. Spirit, but yeah, the Holy spirit just comes alive and it's so amazing. And I want people to know that, that you're no surprise to God. And then mm-hmm. it's not too late. Like, look at Alice. She's 47, rocking this strong, confident, his cover, going to college. Like what? he made her whole life new. She's beautiful. She's fit. She, she took a, like an old life that could have ended with disease and God created a whole new her. Oh, like you're yeah. literally a whole new person. And I love that God can do that. And I love that you give him the glory. And that's why I wanted you on the strong, confident, his podcast. So can you pray for us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Father God, we come to you right now. We come to you and we just lift your name, Father God, and we just thank you. We thank you for the dark times. Thank you for the good times, Father God. And right now, in this very moment, there is someone that is listening to this, Father God, 
who may either be going through addiction or know someone that is going through addiction, Father God. And I just ask that you reach down and put someone in their pathway that they are not alone, Father God, and that with you, all things are possible, that you can bring us out of that darkness and into the light, Father God, and that you see the beauty, Father God. And when we look in the mirror, Father God, that my fit sisters will see, they will see beauty. They will see strong. They will see confident. They will see you, Father. They will see that you can make all things new, Father God. So as we go through our, our daily daily walks and our devotions and our fitness and our and our workouts and our eating, Father God, that we just put you first in that, that we invite you to our table, Father God, that we invite you into our workout, Father God, that we invite you into the recovery of our workout, Father God, that you are in control of all of us. Father God, I thank you for the heart of Kim. Father God, for putting on her heart to just reach out to so many women, Father God, and that we can just keep reaching out daily to those women, Father God, and that, that unlike myself, I, I did hit the rock bottom, Father God, but, but maybe something will just strike them and they will just see that something so simple as, as a smile, as a thank you, or something, a text message that would just let them know that people are praying for them and that they are loved, Father God. So continue to give us your guidance, your grace, and I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for changing my heart, my mind, and my soul, Father God, that when others look at me, Father, that they see you. And that I can just continue to smile for you, Father God, because you are, you are the Abba Father. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to wrap us up with some faith fuel. Oh, yeah, my favorite. Okay. Isn't this good? I was thinking about this and it's like, I think it's Hebrews it is Hebrews 4, 4, 15 and 16. And it says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just yes. as we are. And he did not sin. So in Hebrews 4, 16 says, so let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Dear sister, I have a feeling this episode made you think of someone that needed to hear it. Hit that share button, share it with her. We need to be set free. Jesus came so that we may have life and more abundantly. Yeah. The devil wants you in the dark. He wants you eating in the dark, drinking in the dark. He wants you feeling terrible about yourself in the dark. He wants to pull you down into the darkness and make you crave it. And there is no life there. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. If you see God first in this, you will be like Alice. You will be made new. She is a beautiful embodiment of what it means to be strong, confident, his. And that is our prayer for you today. So please share this episode. And I want to ask you, if you haven't already pre-ordered Fit God's Way, please head to Amazon and, and pre-order Fit God's Way. The book's coming out January 17th, Yay. 2023. I'm so excited. This book is going to help you walk out your faith in Jesus, yeah. your fitness in Jesus, your body image in Jesus, your worth, your mindset. We need to get fit for our calling, ladies, because God has called us to make disciples of all nations. We are called to do what we are doing right now. Right Set now. the captives free. Okay. Yeah. So I yeah. love you sisters. We are here for you. We're praying for you. Come say hi to Allison fit sisters in Christ. Okay. Tell her how this message and her sharing her heart helped you. And we love you so much. Remember you are, so I'll much. let you say it. What are we, Alice? Remember we you are, are strong, confident is amen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>